Hey boys and girls, welcome back. Back in bites, but today I'm gonna to do a little cooking. So I went crabbing this morning. I caught some beautiful crabs right now, they're all cleaned. I don't like it leaving with the shell and the guts and everything, so there you go. All nice and good. Here we got a nice onion and a garlic. We got a garlic in the pan and we're gonna turn them on. We're gonna put them a little olive oil. Little olive oil, like a 15 cups of olive oil. No, just kidding, just whatever you like. I like to go a little heavy like that. We're gonna wait for that to simmer. And we're gonna get a little pot so I can get some red sauce. So, a little onion and garlic in there. Flame on, a little oil. Okay, so. We're gonna start frying this up. We're gonna season it, and I'm gonna tell you why it's called the marinara sauce. Now it could be chunky, which it normally is supposed to be, or saucy, homemade sauce. Ah, nice, homemade. I gotta make them more, I gotta run out. Marinara, five minute sauce, because mariners used to make the sauce on the boats. I don't know what part of Italy they're making marinara sauce on a boat while they're fishing, but that's the story. That's what I know. That's the story, and I stick it to it. All right, so, in marinara sauce, bay leaf. Boom. Parsley. Yeah, parsley. <laughs> okay. Oh, we put it down already. A little basil. And if you have some extra time, put in some time. If you're in a hurry, don't put no time because you got no time. What I like to do, because some people like it red, some people like it white. I get it started with the with the white. Right? I know everything is even and consistent in flavor. Then I'll take some out after I brush the marinara sauce. And then I'll just add a few crabs in there for the flavor. Uh, us Italians up here in the northeast area with the blue cloth thing, we gotta have our Sunday sauce. So if we're going crabbing, we're gonna have our Italian Blue crab, red sauce. Blue crab, red. Blue crab, red sauce. And then if you like my sister who became allergic of tomatoes, imagine the horror. An Italian becoming allergic to tomatoes. She's friends with me on Facebook. If you want to send your sympathies over to her, her name is Anna. Love you, sis. browning in here, small pots already getting brown. We're gonna add the tomato sauce. Ah, here this is, oh, ah. Uh, I love it. Now, we don't let nothing go to waste here. A little water. We'll do a little mix of a mescada. Okay. Put these to the side. You don't have to record me putting that to the side. There's a nice little shot simmering in there. Ah, nice.
that's nice and thick. So what I'm going to do, just to bring it up to a boil, I'm just going to add a little bit of water so she don't burn. Simmer the next time. In the meantime, the garlic here is starting to brown real nice. This is the kind of color you want to get. Get a shot of that real quick. Nice golden brown. Don't want to let it too go too long. And the reason being for that is then the garlic has a tendency to become bitter. So light brown. Keep it nice. Crabs are already an oceanic creature. They're already salty, briny. We're just gonna have just a little bit, then taste later, make sure we're all okay later on. I'm gonna add some to the sauce here. Some people add black pepper. I don't add black pepper in most of my cooking. Uh, it's very, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It'll get you if you're not looking. So, text me down in the comments below what word I'm looking for. Unreliable, unstable. Sometimes you get a batch of black pepper corns that are like super hot. Sometimes you get them when they're super sweet. So there's no telling them what it could do in the flavors that you're cooking. If you want to cook, I suggest using like a white pepper. You'll get that, you'll get that pepper flavor without getting too bold. And then if you want it at the end, you can always add it. You know, most of the fine dining restaurants will come with the pepper mill. And they come with fresh pepper? See when. All you SNL fans will know that one. Alright, so you can see without the lid on, they're starting to turn red. Give them a toss. It's just way get some of that garlic and onion flavor consistent. That oil will, will base them. So this way the flavors are just soak up in whatever meat is exposed on the crab. All right. So besides putting white wine, I'd like to come over to my liquor cabinet over here. Marsala wine from Sicily. Florio Marsala. And not this the crap that you get here in the United States for like seven dollars a bottle. No, this was from Marsala, Sicily. I went there in my travels and I brought back a couple of bottles. Um, typically for having a little sip, uh, I find it to be an underrated equivalent to like a port from Portugal or or Spain, um, Sicily is just now being like recognized for their some of their fine wines. So, has that nice porty flavor. Uh, kind of gives it that that warm, like a like a cooked wine, hot toddy uh, kind of flavor to it. A lot of tones of caramel, the oak. From where it was aged in so we're just gonna pour a little bit of that in another level of flavor oh go back down to the liquor store here i like to go a little crazy and a little expensive we have a fine age 2014 cabin this is like a thousand dollar bottle of wine
Mm. Coat it up real nice. Some for the crabs. Some for me. Cheers. Later on, we develop. I'll have a little drink. Every time I say cheers, you take a sip, I take a sip. By the end of the episode, we'll probably be shit faced and wouldn't want to eat anyway, so. Yeah. So, we toss. We toss, we simmer, we cover. Just lower the heat a little bit. So this will go on for the next like 20, 30 minutes. You don't really need to overcook it. Um, Some may go a little too far, it kind of dries out the meat. And so we'll let that go for 20, 30 minutes and we'll see what happens. So. Stay there, stay tuned. I'll be right back. Hey, welcome back. Uh, part two of cooking Jersey Blue Claw crabs. Come on in. Before I go any further though, I want to give a shout out to Platinum Dental. I'm wearing this shirt right there. They have several locations. I go to the one in Orange, New Jersey. Fantastic bunch of guys. Thank you for making my teeth so pretty. All right, so come on in. So now we have our cooked crabs and a white sauce, white wine sauce. And trick, when you're making shellfish, right before you finish, throw in some butter, it'll help kind of like thicken bind everything. I also like to add the butter to my red sauce. It brings off this like uh, nice smooth finish to the sauce, especially when you're cooking like shrimp, lobster, crab, any type of shellfish even clams. So that's about a half stick of butter I'm throwing in there. Stir that in a little bit. Okay, that's all perfectly cooked, seasoned, ready to go. Just mixing that butter in. For people that know me, they're probably saying, Vinny, but what about your cholesterol? Most of the time, I'm okay with the cholesterol. Today, we're cooking something good, and I like to do it right. So the fat stays in, or the fat gets added in. All right, so we're gonna put that to the side. Now we're gonna work on our spaghetti. Just gonna move this one from the back to the front. Put that one off, turn this one up. Okay, so here we just got plain water. Now, some of you say, well, I cooked the spaghetti the same way they did, and theirs was so much better. Here's the trick. Salt. Salt the water. Don't add olive oil to make it like, oh, well, it doesn't stick. You put the oil. That's a bunch of bologna. All right, so typically for a pound of pasta, right here in my hand, you got about maybe about two tablespoons of salt, maybe a tablespoon and a half, boom, that goes in, over the shoulder for the rest. Now, you can also add the salt in the beginning of the boiling process. This will change like the molecular structure of the water and come up to a boil quicker. So if you add it in the beginning, you're in a rush, you know, that whole five minute meal crap, throw the salt in before, brings it to a boil faster. All right, so while that's boiling, we have that ready, set to go on top of the macaroni when it's done. And this is the brand I like to use. <clears throat> it's a hard durum semolina from Italy. It takes forever to cook. Pasta that takes forever to cook is better for you, especially if you have trouble with sugar. No, I'm a diabetic. I normally don't eat pasta, but for red sauce, I gotta have a little bit of pasta, especially on Sunday. Also, I don't feel like I'm a true Italian. All right, so hard dorm semolina, whether it's this brand or another one, you know, like Ronzoni and Barilla, 
Uh, Ranzoni, you know, I don't want to say they're bad, but they're not the greatest. Uh, it like cooks in five minutes. This one will take a good 15 minutes uh, to get al dente. And that's where you want to stay. You want to stay al dente. You don't want to go overcooked where it's like mushy and like, oh, it's cooked and throw it up on the wall and see if it sticks. By then, it's Play-Doh and your glycemic index spikes after you eat the macaroni. You stay al dente, spaghetti's already hard for your body to digest. And Sophia Laurent had spaghetti every day. And look at her, and she, um, she said that eating spaghetti is what kept her nice and thin. Doctors say it's hard to digest, so it goes in one way, probably comes out the same. I don't know, I don't check, but hard to assemble in, that's where you wanna go. All right, guys, so I'm gonna drop this in. Get the ball moving a little bit. So the trick of not making it stick is to immediately start moving it around. You wanna get a shot? All right, so we start moving it around. For the first couple minutes, you wanna move it around. All right, and the other thing is you wanna try and fan it out so it's kinda of crisscross with each other. If you just leave it at the bottom with any type of pasta, it's gonna bind, you're not gonna be happy. All right, so I'm gonna keep on playing with this until it's done. When it's all done, I'm gonna plate it. By the time you get back, we'll be ready to eat. So stay tuned. I'll see you soon. Hey, what's up, guys? All right, so pasta is cooking. It's done. Tasted it. It's uh, nice and al dente. Get your colander. Put them in the sink. Mug. Save some pasta water. Sometimes whatever you do, it tightens up too much. And you want to add a little, little water. Pasta's in. Six. Like I told you, some people like it red, some people like it white. Since my sister's allergic, we're gonna move some of these crabs over. Expose some of that white wine sauce. Gonna grab a nice bowl's worth in there. You're gonna toss it. You wanna do this like with linguine white clam sauce, whatever, lobster, shrimp. Alright, still al dente, it's still cooking, it's gonna soak up some of the rest of that flavor. The rest of the pasta in the pot. We're gonna grab the red sauce here. We're gonna add sauce to the pasta. We're gonna mix it up. Mix it up, mix it up. Like I said, pasta's still cooking. So instead of sucking in more water, it's gonna suck in whatever sauce you're cooking with. gonna pull all those wonderful flavors right into it. So every mouthful, whether it has the sauce you're cooking with or not, will just be fantastic because it'll have all that flavor in there. All right? Get ready to plate this. So here. They're a little fancy. We'll do, grab some, we'll twirl some, and grab some. Put it right in the pot. I mean, in the bowl. What's that little bird's nest twirl? Okay. Come back. You want to get fancy. You want to get fancy. Do whatever you like. Ranch on top. Your claw here and there. Whatever you like to do. There we go. Nice, right there, right on top. Put that back. Okay. Here we go. 
wonderful New Jersey Blue Claw Crab Marinara Sauce. Oh my God. That is the best, people. Get on board, Blue Claw, Jersey Crab, Red Marinara Sunday Sauce. All right, well, that's all the time I got for you today. I took, definitely took up a lot of your time, but thank you for being patient. Salute, and I'll see you next time. Bye.